The next two sessions will highlight technology partners and how we innovate together. At GitLab, we're strengthening and maturing our product organically. And while our static application security testing is now mature on our rather rigorous maturity scale, there's always room for improvement and iteration, especially with help from technology partners. So it's my pleasure to introduce to you Luke O'Malley with R2C and Taylor McCaslin with GitLab. They'll show you how together we've integrated R2C's SEMGRIP, next generation SAST, with GitLab to prevent vulnerabilities with secure guardrails. Be sure to ask questions in chat or connect with them after the session. Hi everyone, welcome to GitLab Commit Virtual. We're thrilled you've chosen to join us today. We're going to chat about a uh, integration with SEMGREP, a new static analysis tool uh, created by R2C. We'll talk about the next generation of SAST to prevent vulnerabilities with secure guard well, rails. And today I'm joined by Luke O'Malley, who is the co-founder and head of product at R2C. Um, and we'll chat about um, what this integration looks like, why we've chosen to integrate with R2C and their SimGrep tool, and what the future holds. And then Luke is going to tell us a bit about what the future of SimGrep looks like. So let's jump in. And uh, our first uh, point is we are going to talk about future-facing roadmap items in this presentation. So as with everything, this is uh, all future-facing. Things may change. Plans may change. Um, so don't use that for any uh, purchasing or planning decisions. Um, again, all forward-looking statements. So let's dive in. Let's start with looking at what GitLab SAST is today, take a look at where we're going in the future, and then we'll talk a bit about the SEMGREP um, application itself. So in terms of GitLab SAST, we've really focused on developing this shift left persona to really embed security into the DevOps platform that we have here at GitLab. Our ideal setup here basically is that as you develop code, security tests are running and analyzing the source code contributions that you're uh, upgrading that you're introducing with your code commits, and then you're able to mitigate those vulnerabilities all before actually um, deploying that code to production. So we're really trying to embed security scanning and make it an everyday concern for developers. Um, you may have heard this referred to as the shift left, shifting security tools um, as close as possible to developers. And one of the reasons we want to do that is because we want to increase efficiency for development and security. When you commit code, your developers are thinking about that code, they're in the flow, they're developing, they have the context of what they're trying to um, accomplish with it. And if they introduce a security vulnerability, they immediately have the context to work through and remediate that vulnerability. If we wait a week or two or three and uh, deploy that code in production, the engineers have moved on to other functionality, they don't have the context of the code that they wrote. So it's a lot more expensive and a lot slower to remediate those vulnerabilities if you try to remediate them late in the process. So this is that shift left that we were talking about, shifting development and security testing um, as close to the actual development time as possible so that you get the added benefit of that shared code context for developers and reduce the cost and increase the time to remediate those vulnerabilities. So what does this look like in practice? So we've got a visualization here of a traditional feature branch development process. Um, as your developer is working on a feature, they're pushing up commits. Every time a commit gets pushed to GitLab, we're triggering our CI CD process, which runs and triggers all of our security scanning. Um, that is the time that we're detecting all of those vulnerabilities. You'll notice on the far right here, um, the, we run security scans again when you merge that feature branch to your default branch. Um, when we do that, we're also running those security scans and we'll compare that feature branch with the development branch so that you're getting a direct cause and effect with the code vulnerabilities that you're introducing with the changes that you're working on. So you've got a very direct cause and effect for vulnerabilities so the developers can really understand, I made this code change and I introduced this vulnerability, I need to go and remediate that. Um, so that's how our uh, SAST setup it works today within GitLab. Um, 
All of the tools, we support a variety of them, uh, SAST, DAST, fuzz testing, secret detection, composition analysis, um, soft uh, dependency scanning. All of these tools run within GitLab CI and produce outputs. We've normalized all of those so that you can triage and remediate those vulnerabilities um, manage them. There's a whole vulnerability management suite associated as well. And all of that is built in with our security scanning tools. We really want to make it as easy as possible for developers to run as many security scans as needed um, and to really layer those on top of each other so that you're getting the best type of scan. And that's really one of the reasons why we're talking about SimGrep today. We think SimGrep is an awesome tool that is the future of uh, software development and security testing. Um, we want to bring those best in class security tools to developers. And thus that is kind of where the integration with SimGrep was born from. So SimGrep is joining our entire lineup of uh, SAS tools today, though we'll talk a little bit about what that migration path looks like. GitLab SAS is a conglomeration of about uh, 15 different tools that support um, about 20 different languages. Uh, we have automatic language detection. So as you're pushing those commits, we're looking at the code changes and running the appropriate security scanner. They're all language specific today. So you're getting the best scan for the type of code change that you're committing. Um, all of this is built in and easily configured. All you have to do is include that SAS CI template that you see the, the code snippet for there. We also have a UI tool to easily enable that, as well as configure it if you need advanced configurations. We also support customizing rule sets, um, so you can pass custom things to those analyzers as well. Um, all of this, we try to build with it working by default. So we've also built this into Auto DevOps, so you can check a box on your project and get all of GitLab security scanning uh, capabilities uh, on and running by default. Um, in general, they just run and they tell you about security vulnerabilities that you can go and then fix. Uh, and that's really how we've built all of our security tools. And thus, why we again are starting to uh, migrate towards SimGrep, because we think it is a um, amazing and very fast uh, static analysis tool that's really pushing the bar forward for what kinds of vulnerabilities you can detect in source code. So let's continue on and take a look at what we've got today. Um, I did briefly mention that we support custom rule sets. This is when you start uh, wanting to fine tune uh, your rules and add custom rules. Um, you may want to introduce rule sets. Um, the rule sets and the reason I bring this up is because the SimGrep community is actually very rich. There's tons of uh, community contributors that are building and writing rules for the SimGrep engine. So part of our transition to adding SimGrep is actually enabling all of those community rule sets. Um, we'll talk a little bit more of that in the future. But with our 13.11 um, release, we announced a partnership with uh, R2C in their SimGrep tool to power the future of GitLab SAS. As I mentioned before, GitLab SAS today is about 15 different tools. As you can imagine, managing, updating, keeping all of those tools running, secure um, is a large burden. There's also a lot of work to be done to add features like that custom rule sets feature that I talked about. We have to implement that 15 times on top of all of the analyzers that we wrap. Um, it has worked up until now, but we want to support more languages and support them faster. And so one of the thoughts we had was, what if one tool could support multiple languages? And what if it had a really great API and development team behind it? And that's kind of how we discovered SimGrep and the R2C team. Um, we reached out to them and said, hey, we really like what you're, you're doing. Um, the tool is a really modern interpretation of SAST. Uh, we would love to come and replace some of our tooling with the uh, SimGrep engine. And that is effectively how this partnership was uh, developed. In 13.11, uh, we released a beta version of SimGrep powering our JavaScript, TypeScript, and Python analyzer. Um, we recently released that in 13.12 as well. And so all of this together has really helped us to start reducing the number of security tools that we've got running. Um, and we're actively transitioning these analyzers now to SimGrep. Um, if you've used GitLab SAST um, and you have JavaScript, TypeScript, or Python code, you actually may not have noticed it, but you're already running the SimGrep engine by default. Um, we, as part of our management of all of these tools, actively 
um, change the way that those rules and the triggering mechanisms work. So um, we have behind the scenes swapped out those engines to now be running SimGrep. Ideally, you haven't noticed anything. Um, you're getting the same quality results. We did a lot of work to try to um, replicate the quality um, and the coverage of all of those security tools um, to try to make as seamless as a transition as possible. This is only the beginning for us. We really want to uh, empower the rest of SAST and continue transitioning a lot of our analyzers to the SimGrep analyzer engine itself. The idea here is that basically by making this transition, we'll reduce the number of analyzers, we'll uh, engage with the active community that R2C has developed uh, with writing rules, we'll also contribute rules ourselves. Um, this is all built on top of SEMGREP's advanced detection engine, which has a number of uh, modern techniques for dis uh, detecting vulnerabilities, um, which Luke is going to go into here in a bit. It'll also help streamline the customizations that I talked about with custom rule sets so that you'll have a single um, way to express uh, vulnerability detection rules um, and in a really easy to understand language. That was one of the things we really liked about SimGrep was its uh, rule set uh, grammar was actually very easy for developers to understand and to customize, um, which is not true for all of our tools that we have today. And then this sets us up to uh, enable new language support and really expand the number of tools um, and languages that we're able to cover. Um, so that is really the, the background behind why and what we're doing with the SimGrep Analyzer. And just to give you a sense of scale, GitLab SAST today runs 2.75 million monthly scans. So that is a SAS scan for every code contribute that is being run on GitLab. And of those 2.75 million, in the past couple of months, we've already run nearly half a million SEMGREP scans. This has truly been phenomenal to see the just immediate success of this tool. We've done a lot of work to really try to make this as seamless as possible. In most cases, uh, developers on GitLab have not had to do anything to start leveraging the benefits of SEMGREP. Um, and we're only just now getting started to be able to unlock all of the awesome functionality within SEMGREP. And to that point, with when we start looking at what's next, we're going to continue migrating some of our analyzers um, to SEMGREP so that you're getting the benefit of the uh, rule engine uh, that SEMGREP offers and the community of rule writers that are contributing to those rule sets. Um, we're also looking to add support for native SimGrep custom rule sets so that if you find an interesting rule pack on SimGrep or want to work with the R2C team to develop a custom rule pack, you'll be able to bring that in and run that alongside um, natively with GitLab SAST. Um, and then we'll also start expanding to other languages. We're going to try SimGrep's uh, new beta language support for Rust, um, and then kind of go from there as we enable and roll out all of the languages that uh, SimGrep supports. So that's kind of a look of where we're at today and where we're going with GitLab SAST and the SimGrep engine. And now I want to hand it over to Luke O'Malley to talk about R2C and the SimGrep engine. Luke, take it away. Tell us about your tool. Great, thank you, Taylor. Really appreciate it, uh, and hello, everybody. Um, so I wanted to spend the little bit of time that we have together uh, to talk through SEMGREP both within GitLab uh, and outside of it. So give you a little bit of context on the tool and the types of problems that it's really designed uh, to solve, and we can answer questions during the Q and A. So just as a uh, an illustrative question, uh, I wanted to ask the group: What do SQL injection and cross-site scripting have in common? Uh, and these are Obviously, both vulnerability classes, it's not quite the answer I was looking for. Um, we'll leave that question open for a second, and I want to share a story uh, that's going to uh, provide a little bit of detail on what these have in common from a SEMGREP perspective. Um, so stepping outside of security and, and software engineering, uh, I actually want to talk about uh, building codes, uh, and in particular, fires within the state of California. So I live in California, so this is uh, very near and dear for me. Um, and I was reading about the campfire, uh, which happened about two or three years ago, uh, and found this interesting stat that in 2008, uh, building codes changed. And the effect that the building codes had uh, on fire damage was dramatic. So if you were, had a building that was built before 2008, 82% of um, uh, properties were damaged. 
Uh, and if it was after 2008, it was only 49%. Um, and, and the change was relatively small. So it had to do with uh, like fire retardant cladding on homes. Um, but it was a building code, the way that we construct our homes that had an effect on the, the safety and security of that home uh, into the future. So the reason why I bring this up is, you know, we could have built faster fire trucks or maybe bigger uh, hoses, but instead we changed the way that we actually uh, build. And I think this is true for software as well. So what would it look like to enforce software building codes? Um, and this is an approach that uh, a few companies have taken and championed. Uh, so Google comes to mind uh, and then also the React uh, community um, uh, comes to mind. And the building codes in this case are referred to as secure guardrails or secure defaults. So I want to talk a little bit about this and this is how uh, SQL injection and cross-site scripting have something in common. And it has to do with the mitigations and how you eliminate the prevalence of these types of issues in your code base uh, by construction uh, instead of looking for them kind of after the fact. So in the, the guardrails case in SQL injection, uh, instead of making raw SQL queries, uh, most folks now use an object relational mapper of some sort, right? So it's an abstraction on top of their database that they use to interact uh, with the database. Um, and when you introduce this, uh, you virtually eliminate uh, SQL injection vulnerabilities. And I believe this is the approach that Google has taken uh, to great effect. Um, and in the secure defaults case, uh, really the question is, how do we construct uh, a library or a framework that is very difficult to misuse, that doesn't require specialized knowledge to use, or you know when you're um, basically going outside of normal practice. And so for React, instead of having inner, set inner HTML or inner HTML editing, uh, they're very explicit that it's a dangerous um, action. So that it's dangerously set inner HTML is what a software engineer has to interact with. So these are the types of things that uh, I think for me and the members of the SEMGRIP community, we feel like are the future of uh, DevSecOps, um, shifting left, uh, and a secure um, uh, code base. And that's where SEMGRIP really comes in. So the intention of SEMGRIP is to not only find bugs, but to help you enforce these code standards, whether those are standards that are set by uh, the community. Um, so this might be uh, the maintainers of a particular library have standards that they believe should be followed, uh, or it might be things that are specific to your organization. Uh, like the ways that you specifically use authentication libraries um, or the, uh, the ways that you specifically interact with databases. So SEMGRIP as a tool, it's an open source tool. Uh, it works on 17 plus languages right now. So it's got broad language support, um, which Taylor had talked about uh, being one of the compelling reasons to, to try it out. Um, and we do have a rich community. So we've had about a thousand plus rules that have been contributed to the registry uh, with more and more contributed every day. So. If you want to just get started, you can go and use uh, rules that other folks have already written, uh, which helps us uh, rapidly codify uh, you know, um, the knowledge of uh, other security teams uh, and AppSec members. Um, and when you write rules in SEMGREP, uh, one of the things that we found is that a lot of tools required a lot of specialization. So you had to be a security researcher, uh, maybe you're a PhD, um, you know about things like abstracts and tax trees, uh, things of that nature. Um, and that was a, a barrier for a lot of folks who had uh, knowledge. Um, so they weren't able to share that knowledge uh, via a rule. Um, so we've made it really easy to just more or less copy the code that you want to match. And that becomes your rule or your pattern. Um, so it's really the democratization of, of rule writing. Um, it runs super quick. Uh, this is all part of the shift left theme. Like you've got to run this as close to code conception time as possible. Um, so we have a lot of things for that and it should be easy to adopt. So there's some niceties there uh, that the GitLab team has also provided. So when you think about SEMGREP, uh, there's always a the question like, hey, where does it fit into the space? You know, I've, I've heard of linters, um, I use GREP sometimes. Uh, there's some more uh, complex, maybe expensive tools that we've discussed using. You know, where, where are you? And so SEMGREP falls somewhere in the middle of this spectrum. So uh, we wanted a tool that was easy to use, but powerful, um, a tool that was smart, but simple to use. Uh, and so we position ourselves somewhere in the middle where it's aware of the semantics of a programming language. So it's not just performing a, a textual search like grep might. Um, and it also understands uh, things like in the Python programming language, there's different ways to import a library, um, things that you wouldn't want to uh, have to think about all those different edge cases, some grep takes care of. Uh, so that's some of its uh, intelligence to make rule writing easier. 
And within the, the GitLab context, um, if you want to learn more, there's a, a specific page you can go to. So it's semgrep.dev forward slash four forward slash GitLab uh, that talks about uh, both uh, GitLab's native integration uh, and then also some of the SEMGREP community's customization on top of that, specifically so that you can use rules from the registry. Uh, and we're going to dive into that uh, in just one second. Um, so there's a little bit of information there for, your, for you to check out. And uh, the registry, um, which is at semgrep.dev forward slash explore, uh, contains both individual rules uh, that members have authored, uh, as well as collections of rules. So we call those rule sets. And so you can go through the registry. Uh, you can search it by language, um, by type of issue that you're interested in. Um, you can click on any rule or rule set, uh, and you can run that uh, very quickly, uh, either in your terminal um, or uh, if you're using uh, the integration that I spoke about earlier, uh, you can actually just add this uh, to your job definition um, within SunGrub CI. So it's or within GitLab CI, excuse me. So very easy to go in and start to add more stuff. Um, so here's a sample where I've chosen to run a rule set that covers OWASP top 10 type of issues. Uh, and if you're feeling super adventurous uh, and you are fully committed to shift left and you want to get results in front of developers, uh, there's also an integration for inline uh, merge request comments, which has been, um, as a developer, really nice, really nice to get. So I just wanted to show that briefly. So again, you can go to uh, sengrip.dev forward slash four forward slash uh, GitLab for, for more details. And the GitLab documentation as well is fantastic um, for the, the native GitLab integration. Um, so we promised to talk a little bit about what's coming next for SEMGREP. Uh, so the big thing I think that we're excited about is um, really helping the GitLab team transition more of their analyzers, which has been a truly awesome relationship, um, both because the team is contributing their rules back to the registry uh, for everyone to use, um, but it's also pushed us on the performance front, um, you know, uh, kind of grinding down the sharp edges. Um, which has been really, really uh, valued. Um, we also have our eye on a number of performance improvements. So uh, we've got the, you know, uh, kind of catch catch or tagline uh, that it's static analysis at ludicrous speed, um, but we want to be even faster and specifically improving the in-editor experience so that you can run uh, your rules or rules from the community um, on every single file save within the editor. So that's truly trying to, uh, to shift left. Um, and there's been some questions about uh, the power and capability of SEMGREP. And so one of the features that we're adding and working on is uh, further uh, tainting capability. Um, so you can specify sources and syncs um, and accomplish some more sophisticated uh, types of rules and checks. And then finally, more languages, uh, more and more folks, uh, both within the R2C team uh, and within the community, uh, are writing uh, new language parsers. So I know that we're adding Bash right now, uh, HTML. We talked about Rust earlier, Kotlin, um, basically all the languages that you can think of. And we're really fortunate to be able to use the tree sitter uh, project as well, which is another open source project. So if any of this seems interesting to you, uh, we have a, a really active uh, and I think really friendly community. Um, you can access that through r2c.dev forward slash Slack. Uh, and folks are there to answer your questions, um, both from the R2C team and then from the, the broader community. So would love to get a chance to, uh, to show you what SEMGREP is all about. And that, that wraps it up. Um, Taylor, is there anything that you want to add uh, before Q&A? No, I think in general, hopefully you've enjoyed this presentation hearing from Luke and getting a, a slight peek into how awesome the SEMGREP tool is. Um, like I mentioned, we've had a blast working with the R2C team. They're a great group of people. Uh, definitely, if you are running GitLab SAS today, you're already likely using SEMGREP and don't even know it. If you're interested in customizing that experience, um, looking further into SimGrep is probably a great next step. And like I mentioned, we'll be coming out with more native integrations for you to be able to run your custom rule sets and to develop your own and run those alongside GitLab natively. So lots of exciting capabilities here. And ultimately, all of this is about helping you write more secure code. And that's what we're here to do. Everyone can contribute. and. Hopefully with GitLab SAST and SimGrep, everyone can write really secure code. Luke, thanks again for joining me today. It was awesome to hear um, more about the SimGrep tool and where you're headed in the future. I can't wait to work more with your team. Yep, we feel the same. Thank you, Taylor. And thank you everyone for tuning in. Awesome. Thanks everyone. Have a great uh, commit and we'll see you next year. Thanks. <laughs>